What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. We are back with another off-season rebuild. We're continuing with the last two teams that were eliminated from round one. We still have the Hawks to do, and today we're doing the Memphis Grizzlies. The only thing I have to say, it is very clear that the Memphis Grizzlies were not, in fact, fine in the West. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and submit the rest of these playoffs and see who goes on to win the championship real quick. You got Denver and Miami, and you're going to have... Oh, if I can click some link current round we're going to have the nuggets going to win the championship so 2k has the nuggets going on to beat the miami heat in seven games that's their prediction at least for now it probably changes every single time i simulate it but regardless talking about the memphis grizzlies for a second um yeah they talked a big game it did not work out for them john moran said they were fine in the west at the time i guess it was okay to say because the lakers weren't quite as good and then i don't know i can't even remember exactly what was all going on at the time but yeah probably shouldn't be saying that and then another guy that's obviously a huge victim of, or not victim i should say but a huge guy that talks a big game dylan brooks and there was already a report yesterday that shams has come out and said that the grizzlies will not be bringing back dylan brooks under any circumstances so i'm glad i've waited to do this rebuild because i don't even know if i would have brought him back or not but I'm glad I don't have to. So let's just get straight into it. Let's go to the lottery. So as far as the Grizzlies are concerned, I think they need to add another player here, maybe another wing uh, to replace Dylan Brooks. We're going to have to need, we're going to need somebody else to replace him. As far as draft pick is concerned, we do have the 25th pick. Pacers got one and Blazers have got the second overall pick. So not too shabby. Staff signing. I think I do want to bring back Taylor Jenkins, of course. Uh, there's no reason. I thought he would still be under contract. Uh, so he does have one offer. And uh, I just did a short on this team. A second ago and i literally couldn't get taylor jenkins back so i don't know if that's going to change oh i got him this time okay last time he literally declined my offer i, I didn't want to see him go because he's like literally the real life head coach regardless though i'm gonna fill this out and uh i have an idea in mind of a guy that i think i want to bring in and they actually try to get this guy i believe at the trade deadline so probably gonna revisit that because i think the grizzlies will most likely revisit it in real life Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. The NBA playoffs are officially upon us, and there's no better way to get more out of the NBA playoffs that you're watching with Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to bet overs or unders on the players you love watching. Let me show you the website. Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop. Currently, we're on the desktop version, and you're going to be opened up with this. Basically, you have every sport you can imagine. You got tennis soccer pga cs go if you're into stuff like the MM mma but we're here for the nba the plan tournament is officially starting and i'm looking at some of these props right here and i'm feeling juicy so all you basically do you can choose between two to six players this is my favorite way of getting more out of the game i'm watching i'm already going to watch the game so might as well have some fun with it so let's say i wanted to go clint capella over points and let's say i want to go like maybe over Tyler Hero's prop as well. You just go more and more. Uh, three or two players is three times your money, and you can go all the way up to 25 times with six players. If you're still unsure about it, here are some examples of winnings I've had in the past, and you can go ahead and sign up with my link down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES. They're matching your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100 for first-time users. Thank you, Prize Picks. For sponsoring today's video so before heading to draft night i don't plan on drafting anybody with that 25th overall pick there was some talks that said that the grizzlies try to add a wing at the trade deadline with mikhail bridges i think they offered for him and i think they also offered for og Ananobi. um obviously mikhail bridges price has probably gone up even further from how he's played i'm sure the nets just value him way too highly right now on the other hand go ahead and sue me i know there's gonna be someone that comments down below you always trade with the raptors well it's because they have really good wings that make a lot of sense on a lot of good teams they have good players okay and uh they try to get og to so i think they should definitely revisit the idea of that his price may even go down just because the raptors are in a spot where maybe t i don't know maybe his price hasn't gone down and Masai jerry will stay where he's at i know they asked for a lot when the blazers try to get him so i'm gonna try to get og to to start this video because they try to get him so let's revisit that right and i know someone's gonna be upset with me but that's fine i'm still gonna go for him so i'm gonna go try to get og on anobi from the toronto raptors to start this video i think he'd be the perfect replacement to dylan brooks and uh, i would love him here so i'm gonna go straight for that i think he's gonna fit seamlessly on this roster so og and anobi what would i have to offer to get him those the question we shall see i'm not offering morant jackson or bane obviously those three guys off limits adding og to this core would be absolutely amazing uh, to match his salary, I'm going to either need Luke Kennard's salary or I'm going to need Brandon Clark's salary. I'm going to throw Luke Kennard's in here first. Obviously, that's not the trade. we got to offer more than that. I know the Raptors, like I said, have wanted a lot for him. So I'm going to offer my 2023 pick in this draft. Probably another one, 2025 unprotected. And then I'm going to go probably a couple young players because this is what the Raptors are going to ask for. So I'm going to go maybe David Roddy. 
and then Jake LaRavia potentially I would offer Zara Williams but uh he doesn't have his option right now uh maybe Kennedy Chandler I don't know is this too much for OG maybe but that's what the Raptors have been asking for maybe I just go one player two draft picks and then Luke Kennard maybe a second as well I'm gonna offer that they do agree so we get OG on Anobi maybe I give up too much maybe I didn't give up enough obviously obviously everyone's opinion is different I'm gonna move OG back to that small forward spot but I think he's gonna fit honestly exactly what we needed no more Dylan Brooks OG will be the guy instead and he kind of fits the timeline of the team as well he's like not too old so that's why I think he's like a perfect fit let's go to player options though looking straight at these options we have Desert Bain, Tillman, Aldama and Zara Williams gonna accept every single one qualifying offers we got nothing going on here and then free agency um we obviously have like Dylan Brooks who's a free agent and like I mentioned already the Grizzlies aren't bringing him back so we're not going to do that either uh, I do have an I, I I could sign like a mid-level player it looks like which is nice so I'll go for that uh so John Morant Tyus Jones is our point guard duo which I like obviously Zara Williams uh, I'm not really sure what the Memphis Grizzlies plan on doing with him he hasn't been all that great for them uh John Kachar uh OG Ananobi Aldama Jaron Jackson we have Adams Tillman and Clark so we have depth at center it looks like we need another like backup wing unless we plan on Zara Williams just like progressing like crazy which I don't think he does if I'm not mistaken so uh I got I guess I'm gonna try to look at free agency first for this so we have like Joe Ingles but the options on the board kind of suck I'm not gonna lie obviously I'm not bringing back Brooks we already kind of mentioned that they have to wait till day 12 of free agency because honestly I don't like any of these options like literally none of them like literally like Gary Harris I guess would be fine but I'm you know kind of looking bigger picture so I'm gonna renounce Dylan Brooks does that change anything I'm gonna wait till day 12 and maybe on day 12 I can snag somebody because usually on day 12 you can sometimes get somebody very cheap and then that's what we'll go with so day 12 we're gonna have well I gotta look at the option so as far as who's left got like Reggie Bullock uh Javante Green Karis LeVert man, asking for way too much money Seth Curry home to Diallo Diallo would be fine but I don't know if I can convince them to sign so five million dollars get Diallo 25 years old would be really nice backup that should be it so we're gonna get home to Diallo to be our backup for one year John Moran is up we got uh Jackson up OG or Desmond Bain I should say is up OG is up because we moved him back to small forward Tash Jones Tillman Adams is down and that's probably gonna keep continuing so as much as I do like Steven Adams for this team he is going to suck in 2k so we might have to uh, we might have to revisit the idea of trading not revisit but visit the idea of trading him potentially maybe at the deadline as soon as the deadline or maybe we can wait till next offseason we'll see because we do have some contracts we can throw together we just did give up some picks for OG though so it's not like we have a ton of assets left but of a couple young guys we could throw together if we needed to so I think that might be something we look to do is trade Steven Adams for a better center depending on the simulation is going we might do it sooner rather than later we're gonna go with a nine rotation or Taylor Jenkins gonna be John Morant Bain OG Nanobi Jaron Jackson Steven Adams I think that starting five is very good if we could upgrade that center position even better Tash Jones really good backup point guard one of the best in the league Tillman Clark and then Santi Aldama I don't really want to see well Tillman's a better overall I really don't want to see I feel bad for leaving Clark out of the rotation though I don't really want to see Clark and Tillman playing though I guess I'm just gonna leave it like that I'm gonna go with the 10-man rotation and go with that I guess we'll be running two centers off the bench that's fine and uh I'll probably see you guys at the deadline or if things are going well I'll just go straight to the playoffs so under no circumstances could I justify stopping the trade deadline and trading Steven Adams this team was just clicking on all cylinders 33 points per game from John Morant winning the MVP with 11 assists pretty good efficiency as well Webb and Yama rookie of the year in Indiana Jordan Poole six man and Golden State defense player goes to AD did we get coach of the year as well Garland wins most approved Quinn Snyder got coach of the year unfortunately and then Harrison I think that made no that's Cleveland so we got a Hawks representative uh Cleveland representative and then John Morant represented us for MVP which is awesome so all NBA first team of course John Morant makes that team all NBA second all NBA third do we get Jackson on all defensive team we do are oh, there he is all defense second team W and then OG is not here so regardless though first in the west like I told you we were fine in the west this year I guess 61 and 21 literally we're what is that 13 games over over every other team so that's amazing we take a look at the player stats for the season we had 33 from John Morant 20 from Desmond Bain 18 from Jaron Jackson 12 from Tyus Jones with seven assists 11 from OG seven from Tillman six from Diallo and then five from Aldama and then five from Brandon Clark the only problem with OG and Anobi apparently a big thing for OG is he's been looking for a bigger role so if he came to Memphis I don't know if that role would get much bigger to be honest with you it might even get worse because you have like three guys already that are kind of established so maybe in that regard it wouldn't make a ton of sense for Memphis to go get OG and Obi but if he could just like accept a role that'd be perfect and as you can see it worked out at least for now as we got the first seed in the West 
But now you get to play the Golden State Warriors, which is going to be the ultimate test because, as we know, these teams have uh, have literally gotten into each other's faces in the past. Uh, Grizzlies and Warriors is a good good rivalry we have seen so far. Obviously, Draymond Green is wrote in on the what was it the whiteboard that said the Grizzlies are going to get the reality check. Well, I say here that the Warriors are going to get theirs. Similarly, current round, I'm going to go to a nine minute rotation as well. There's no reason to play ten deep in the playoffs, so. Nine-man rotation, and then I think, well, I mean, do I take out one of the centers? Probably not. It seems to be going well. Two backup centers, I guess, is working. Somebody current round against Golden State, and we are going to go to a game seven early on. Okay. This could be problematic. Uh, losing in round one would be very tough, I would say. Very, very tough, especially for our egos that we do have here in Memphis. So hopefully... The Warriors do not beat us as an eighth seed. It's the We Believe Warriors all over again. But this time, obviously, they're, you know, more established. Can we come out here and take them down? And we do beat the Warriors in seven. They gave us a scare, though. I will not lie. So there's no reason to talk. Bane, you were absolutely horrible in that game seven. Thankfully, we won, though. All right, now we're getting to go play Denver. So Denver's got Jamal Murray, KCP, Porter, Gordon, Jokic. They had a Russell Westbrook, which is interesting. Karis Avert, Zeke Naji, and Christian Brown. So game one, they're, they're up one to zero. Uh, we even it up, though. Uh, 1-1 one, one. game two or game three. I keep saying the wrong game. Okay. Game five, big one. We're up three to two. And can we make it to the conference finals? We can. And we're in the conference finals and we get one of the Lakers, one of the Lakers or the Clippers. And we get the Clippers. I would have loved to have played the Lakers, get some sweet revenge on them, but the Clippers are fine too. Bones, Holland, Paul, George, Kawhi, Batum, Zubach, Plumlee, DiVincenzo, Terrence Mann, and Norm Powell. So here we go. Game one, up one to zero. Great start. We might be booking our ticket to the finals earlier than i would have expected two to one can we go three to one yes we can and we are going to the nba finals to play the cleveland cavaliers so this seemed to work out adding og was exactly what we needed that was like literally like the only thing that i did and then i also signed diallo that was pretty much it uh, i got the Cavs who have jonathan isaac which honestly is kind of interesting but he can never stay healthy so i don't know if that'd work out but here we go let's see here goes nothing game one one zero lead for cleveland they're up two to zero. The fact that we made it to the finals is still a really good sign, but we do lose in four. But we made it to the NBA finals. I feel like the biggest thing this offseason is to unfortunately upgrade from Steven Adams. If we can get a better center here, we should literally just be like in a perfect spot. I don't know whether or not I want to bring or want to keep Tillman or Clark. I think it doesn't make a ton of sense to run two backup centers, even though it seemed to work this year, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's something I definitely want to consider. LeBron James is going to retire in the West. So that's going to make things a little bit easier. Draft lottery time. We're not going to have a pick here, I don't believe. Unless if I do, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah. The, oh, we have the Warriors pick. Okay. What trade is that from? Is that... I don't even remember. Is that from the Iguodala trade? No, probably not. Probably something else, and I just can't think of what it was. But 17th overall pick via the Golden State Warriors. That could come in handy, uh, potentially, for upgrading our center position. So a center that I'm looking at here before we head into draft night is Miles Turner. The Pacers have Victor Webb and Yama. I feel like that would make Miles Turner way more expendable, and we could have him at that center spot next to Jaron Jackson literally would be kind of amazing so that is what i'm going to go for because of the fact they have victor webb and yama that probably makes miles turner way more expendable he's on the last year of his contract as well 10 points seven rebounds two blocks 36 percent from three i think he'd be the perfect stephen adams replacement so that's what i'm going for here to start this off season so i am going to throw adam salary in here to kind of make it work and then honestly i feel like they'd probably rather have like brennan clark uh if they were going to do something like this so like let's give them brennan clark we'll keep tillman and then I'm probably going to have to throw like, I don't know, maybe like a Kennedy Chandler in here and then a John Conchar. I don't know if that's going to make it interesting for them. And then that 17th pick. And I'm, I'm going to try 17. This for Miles Turner, they do not agree. I'll throw 29 in here as well. This is going to be our all-in move for Miles Turner. And we give it up and we are going to have a interesting starting five of Miles Turner, Bane, once we re-sign OG Nobi, which he's going to want to bag. But... That makes us very, very good. Very, very versatile. I honestly love it. So that is our all-in move here with this Memphis squad. Let's go straight to player options. OG is going to decline. We're going to accept everyone else. And qualifying offers, we're going to have Desmond Bain. So we're going to have to pay Desmond Bain and OG this offseason. So it's going to be very, very expensive. But this is what you pay for a team. And the Tyus Jones, Tillman. Ooh, okay. This is going to be expensive offseason. I will be honest. But I think I want to bring literally everybody back if I can. So OG, we're going to make sure we take care of him. Uh, but we are going to be in the luxury tax. So I'm going to sign Tyus Jones to a deal. Bring him back to be our backup point guard going forward. And then Tillman, since I just got rid of Clark, I want to bring back Tillman as well. So, or I could run with Steven Adams, but Adams will probably go down overall. So I'm going to sign these guys. And then obviously we'll wait on a Bain offer and we'll match it. So got those taken care of. And now it's time to lock up Desmond Bain. 
Are we about to be expensive? Very much so. But you know what? It's going to be worth it. I feel like with Miles Turner coming in, and we could sign one more player if we need to. So we got Tyus Jones, John Morant. We're going to have Desmond Baines there, Williams, OG and Obi, Jaron Jackson, Aldama, and then Adams, Tillman, Miles Turner. We can bring in one more wing as well, which I'm planning on doing. So we have like Hayward, we have Alani Walker, we have DiVincenzo, who honestly would probably fit perfectly off the bench for us. So I'm going to go Dante DiVincenzo. And that will be my offseason. So bringing in Miles Turner and DiVincenzo, I think is very, very solid. We got everybody locked up as well. So it's just a matter of eventually going out there and winning it all. Adams would probably just walk in uh, free agency. There, Williams is up. So we could technically use Adam Sauer to add another player if we wanted to. But everyone in our starting five is up and overall. The morale is up. Everything is looking phenomenal. Things are lining up for us to potentially go out there and be a contender already this next season. Got to the finals last year. I've only gotten better from there. So hopefully with Miles Turner being added, things are just about to be on the up and up. So let's go straight into what this rotation is about to look like. I think this is about to be very, very terrifying. So power ranking lands at three. Got John Morant, Bain, OG, Jaron Jackson, Turner, Tyus Jones, Tillman, DiVincenzo, Aldama. That is honestly perfect. If I do stop the deadline and make a move, I will show you. I mean, the team is already kind of well-rounded though. So there may not be any need to do so. But if I feel like there's a move we can make, I won't hesitate to do so. We got back-to-back -back MVPs going to our boy John Morant, 31 and 10 once again. Shot a little bit better from three this year. Booker is your rookie of the year in Sacramento. Brandon Miller, six man in Orlando. Giannis fits a player, fully most approved. And Logan Schmidt, coach of the year for the Celtics, is uh, your coach of the year, like I just said. And then obviously you got Brandon Harrison, executive for the Cavs. Got John Morant, All NBA first team once again. All NBA second team, All NBA third. What about all defensive teams? We don't get anybody there unless if I just missed it, which we do get Jaron Jackson. So. Taking a look, first seed in the West again. So if we take a look at the player stats for this year, we had 31 and 10 from John Morant, 20 from Bain, 17 for Jackson, 13 from OG, 12 from Tyus Jones, and then nine from Miles Turner with three, or that's three fouls, my bad. Uh, two blocks, which is nice. Nice. Jackson and Miles Turner would be pretty scary down low, I would say. And uh, obviously both of them can shoot on top of that. So that'd be pretty amazing to have those two together. But regardless... We get to play the Phoenix Suns. So the Phoenix Suns have Proctor, no longer Chris Paul, but they still have Kevin Durant. Right now, the Suns are down 2-0 to zero to the Nuggets, which is uh, maybe not too surprising because the Suns team isn't really exactly filled out. I think in the offseason, they'll be much better once they have a free agency. But I feel like we're built to win now, so hopefully we don't lose the Phoenix in round one. Um, we are going to go to a game seven once again in round one. So Golden State gave us issues last year, and now the Suns are doing literally the same thing. So here we go. Hopefully this time we don't end up losing. It is Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. So like, I'm not too surprised, but it would definitely really suck to get bounced out in round one here as the first seed. It's almost happened twice. Thankfully though, we take care of business, beat them by 10, 22, 99, 20, 19, and then 18. Even Tillman stepped up, which is great. And now we get Houston. So Houston's going to have Dillingham, Green, Cameron Whitmore, Jabari, Shingun, and then Claxton. So very good team in Houston. Houston always does a great job, or the CPU GM, I guess, always does a great job of filling out their roster. So game one, we're up 1-0, though, 156-121. 33-17 from Ja. Game two, 2-0. Two to zero. So far, so good. 2-1, to one. this is where they could even it up. And they do not. 3-1, to one. can we beat them in five? Yes, we do. And we're once again back to playing the Golden State Warriors. So the Warriors, they're going to have Stephen Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Kumenga, Looney, Jordan Poole. Literally kind of the same team other than Kamenga has developed even further. Klay Thompson hasn't gone down overall too much like he usually does. And then Draymond, of course, is on the decline like usual. But here we go. Another rivalry renewed. 123 to one or to 93. We got absolutely killed. Kamenga has stepped up for them. So this could be a tough series for us. 27-15 from Ja. Game three, we're up two to one. Beat them pretty badly there. Game four, this would be a huge win. We let them even it up though. And now we got to go to a game five with a sim cast. So obviously... This game five is going to be super important. So can we come out here and take down the Golden State Warriors to win this game five and push ourselves to a huge advantage? Close game. We have the lead right now, and it looks like we are going to take them down in game five. 33 and 10 from John Morant. Now, can we win game six and not even worry about a game seven? We go to a game seven. So the Warriors are pushing us to a game seven, and we're waiting on Boston potentially if we get past the Warriors anyway. So here we go. Game seven. In Memphis to get back to the finals to take down our foe, the Warriors. They have the lead right now. Can we take it back? We do take the lead back and we're running away with it. It looks like, okay, it's somewhat of a close game. 97 103, 97 106. It's looking good, looking good, looking good so far. And I think we have made it to the NBA finals. John Morant is your finals MVP. And now we get to play the Boston Celtics now. 
John Moran did give the Celtics their credit when the, in that interview. He said the only team he was worried about was the Celtics, and here we are playing them in the finals. So here we go. Can we take them down? Game one, 1-0 one lead for Boston. Not a great start. Seems like the Eastern Conference owns us so far. Game two, we even it up, though. 112-104, 31-6 to from Brown, 24-6-8 from John Morant. Game three, I'd say it would be a huge win. Can we even it up? Nope, down 3-1. to one. Once again, we might be losing in the NBA Finals to an Eastern Conference team. So... Literally kind of sucks, not going to lie to you, but let's see what happens. And we are going to, looks like, probably get bounced out here in this game five, which really is so unfortunate. Let's come back at the end. So back-to-back -back finals end in disappointment. Did we get swept last year by Cleveland? I literally can't remember. So, I mean, at this point, I don't really know what more I can add to this team. I really like where we're at as a roster. I think it's just a matter of just keep running it back until it works. You know, obviously, it may never work, but we at least got to try. So as far as draft picks are concerned, I'm pretty sure this pick is going to the Raptors. So there's probably no big move left for me this offseason. I probably could have made one of the deadline with Adam's expiring contract. Maybe it would have been smart to do so, but uh, we kind of didn't have like a ton of assets left. So I um, guess I'm just going to sign a wing whisper and maybe get one bench piece and run it back. Literally, that's probably it. I forgot to mention I have to re-sign Miles Turner, and this is once again going to be very expensive. So I'm going to sign Miles Turner. And then honestly, the only thing I can do now is probably wait on Aldama and Zare Williams come back. I already accepted Jake LaRavia. So the bench is pretty much well-rounded for the most part. I guess we literally just kind of need like a small fort if we needed anything. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that in free agency. So I'm probably just going to wait on Aldama and Zare Williams come back on their qualifying offers. And then maybe at the deadline, we can trade them. I don't know. We'll see. Um, probably just going to do that. And then maybe at the deadline, we can make like a dream move for a backup small forward with all these guys that we have. So Zara Williams and Aldama are both back in their qualifying offers. John Morant, 98 overall. Taz Jones, Toma DiVincenzo. So it looks like everyone's going up and overall at the very least. Uh, Zara Williams even went up to a 79, which was kind of surprising. So he might be a rotational piece this year. Have pretty good depth. Could cash it all in on like a one move. But I think I'm going to run it back. One final season, Power Kings are going to land us at number five. Rotation is pretty much the same. Zero Williams is out of it. Jake LaRavia is out of it. Aldama, DiVincenzo, Tillman, Tyus Jones. And the proficiency is a four and a half. So I'll potentially see you guys at the deadline because maybe we could cash in on all these guys that we have left. We're not going to be able to pay all of them. So we'll see. So first time in this video, we have not gotten the first seed in the West. We ended up with a second seed. I decided not to make any move at the deadline. What I was really looking for was a better small forward. But then I realized... I could literally just move uh, Zara Williams a small forward, and he went up to an 81 overall. So he actually develops pretty well in 2K. I know there's not a lot of promise about him in real life. At least I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's not a ton to like there. Uh, but hey, in 2K, he gets really good. 36% from three, 81 overall, average 12 points. Not too bad. Probably could have waited on him to be my starting small forward if I really wanted to, but it's okay because we have OG, of course, as well. And that's just more depth, which you might lose him in the offseason. So it would be great to just win a championship here. The Blazers have Scoo Henderson, Shaden Sharp as their backcourt, Taylor Hendricks, Damian Lillard is the sixth man, and Simon, dude, the guards that the Blazers have is absolutely ridiculous right now. Simons and Dame are coming off the bench for this team. Henderson and Shaden Sharp, that's actually insane. The guard rotation for this team is wild. Uh, you guys think the Celtics guard rotation is good? Well, wait till the Blazers draft Scoo Henderson and keep Simons, because that would be wild. Regardless, so many current round, can we beat them? That was the question. And we are going to lose, or going to beat them in six, I should say. Honestly thought with those guards, they are going to beat us, but... Thankfully, we take them down. Zare Williams even stepped up in that game, had 23 in that closeout game. Now we get the Timberwolves, who drafted LeBron James. They got Window Moore at the small forward, Edwards, Cat, they still have Gobert. I mean, obviously, these teams have visited the, visited the playoffs in the past. Hopefully, we don't lose to them this time. We beat them last time, but we're down 2-0, to zero, down 3-0, to zero, and that is going to be all she wrote, probably. Actually, just kidding. We've won two straight. So hopefully, we can come out here and have the Timberwolves blow a 3-0 to zero lead. That would be phenomenal because I did not plan on exiting early this year. I wanted to make it back to the finals, but the Timberwolves may have our number here. It's looking like as they're going to run away at the very end and close out 108 to 126. So regardless of what I threw together for this team, did not matter. This year we lost in round two. Do I run it back one more year? I've been recording for like 31 minutes. Um, I'm going to run it back one last season, literally one more year. Jackson about to be agent, so this team is about to get even more expensive Zara Williams, I honestly want to bring him back as well, but like, yeah, it's going to be very expensive. So I'll see you guys at the end of next season, because at this point, it's just a matter of eventually it's going to work out, I hope.
So last season of running it back, we got the second seed in the West. Oklahoma City is the first seed once again. Uh, basically, I have been probably, what is the quote they say? Uh, you know, insanity is running it or doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. Well, here I am living proof of doing that right here. I don't know if it's going to work out for me. We get Houston in round one. They have Jimmy Butler. They could have added him back then when they had James Harden, but I guess they get him years later. This could be an eighth seed or seven seed upset, I guess. So somebody current around against Houston and it's looking bad. And yeah, I had a feeling that was about to happen for some reason. So that is, uh, if I had a clown mask, I'd put it on me right now. Regardless though, you got the Thunder and the Pistons. So it looks like our first two chances of winning a championship were in the first year. So I guess I did my duty by making this team fine in the West, but we were not fine in the NBA because we got eliminated by two East Conference teams in the final. So... Regardless, I'm going to end it off on that note. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop a like if you did. I'll see you all tomorrow with the Hawks one, I believe. But for now, this is Crushables. Until next time, I'm saying ace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.